Gerard in Connecticut. How are you today? Hi, Russell. Hi, Phil. How are you guys doing? Good, doing thanks. All right. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I actually called it last time you were hosting the show. Both of you guys are hosting the show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So what I want to what I'm wanting to call in today, I want to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, atheism, theism, agnosticism, because uh, Matt said a couple things on the show a couple weeks ago that I found problematic. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't, which is, I didn't see it. so the main thing specifically he said, that it's impossible, not being an atheist or a theist is impossible. Okay. Um, I've, I'm not necessarily going to stand behind that statement. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's not that I think it's wrong per se, but that I sometimes find it a waste of time to spend a lot of time focusing on the meanings of specific words. Uh, mm-hmm. I would rather... Uh, people come to a clear understanding of of like the concepts behind those words and uh, like what they generally uh, you know what what their general philosophical understanding of the concept of God is. So yeah, uh, maybe maybe um, you will want to call back and argue with Matt about it. Well, I, I'm not gonna like you know I'm not gonna try to say why I think Matt said that. Um, okay. But I think there is, like, a problem with, because, you know, I've, I've, obviously I call myself agnostic. I think that's a perfectly good term. The thing is, though, when people push the idea that atheism and theism is a dichotomy and that there's no in-between right. or nothing well, at all. In, instead not, of talking about what those words actually mean and whether they're actually a dichotomy, I guess my main question is why does it bother you that much? What's the big deal to you? Because it's it's incorrect information. It's like okay. when a theist tries to say an atheist is agnostic. Does, is that not annoying? Is that well, not like incorrect for them to say? Words are imprecise. Sometimes they have multiple meanings, and sometimes when you say a word, even if you, you think it has a very specific definition, the concept you have around that word isn't the same thing that another person has around the same word. Uh, There are people who have specifically said, I don't call myself an atheist, even though uh, they are uh, in every way the thing that they say about what they believe makes them sound like exactly like what I would call an atheist. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you have, well, I'm thinking that this point of view will make Dave Silverman make me unpopular with Dave <laughs> Silverman specifically, who had this, who had a crowd in Washington uh, shout the word atheists and pump their fists or whatever. Um, yeah, well, that, that's another I, thing. The American atheists website. Yeah. Um, they um, say atheism is just lack of belief in God. There's no other definition. It's the one. Well, they're wrong about that. There's a lot of other definitions. It's just that when I call myself an atheist, I happen to be, I happen to mean that I don't believe in a God and anything, and a lot of other things around that word are open for discussion. And I agree with Dave Silverman wholeheartedly that it would be great if more people would feel comfortable and confident about identifying as an atheist. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I want to encourage that as much as I can. But I don't want to waste time (laughs) haranguing a person because they don't use a particular word. Um, Okay, perfect. So... I mean, I mean Perfect. that's all. I'm, but... I'm just glad we're in agreement, though. So, okay. You know, that it isn't that it isn't inherently impo- like a dichotomy or impossible anything. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to say like according to one particular definition of atheist, it is definitely true that it. I mean, you know, it it could certainly be said that it is a complete dichotomy. Uh, okay. But I, I mean, a. I don't sit around yelling at people about what words mean. And B, uh, it it strikes me as a a side issue that is, um, (laughs) like, it doesn't bother me as much as you that Matt or Dave Silverman says that. Okay. Then, 
we can talk, and we can actually talk about what another issue that I think does have to do with core beliefs of atheists. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a controversial claim and say that I think a significant number of atheists don't just not believe in God, but they also believe that no God exists. And I think that's a significant thing. Wait, so you're saying that if you call yourself an atheist, then you have to believe for sure that no God exists? No, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying a lot of atheists happen to also believe that. Okay, well, yeah, a lot of people do say yeah, that. There may be some, but at first you said most, and then you said um, well, I a said lot. a significant number, and mm -hmm. I will say by a significant number. Um, okay. Because I think, like, one thing I see a lot of times is... Yeah, obviously, um, you know, if you do define atheism as lack of belief in God, then that means you don't have to, you know, you don't have, like, a burden of proof. The burden of proof is on the person saying that God exists. Uh, but that's also not entirely, I mean, it's, that's true, but it's also true that if you say that a God doesn't exist, you also have to, you also have a burden of proof to justify why a God doesn't exist. That's true. And if you dive into the conversation, listen, I'm, I have argued with atheists right here on this show who said, uh, I am an atheist and I can prove God doesn't exist. I mean, I will happily <laughs> take the opposition on that point because I don't think that it makes sense to say uh, that it's 100% uh, certain or you can prove it or whatever. Uh, so... Yeah. So, yeah, I think those people do have the burden of proof if they are making a claim of certainty, which is why I don't, sure. and Matt generally doesn't either. Well, here's the thing. I didn't say anything about certainty. I just said about belief. And, okay. Um, so, so let me go, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, you both know the Dawkins scale. Where are you on the Dawkins scale? Uh, probably the same as Dawkins, 6.9-ish. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Somewhere about yeah. I know this guy you're talking about, but yeah, six in, in that, yeah, in that range, yeah. Okay. Um, so I would actually say that around a six or later does mean you believe that a god does not exist. Um, it doesn't mean you know that a god exists. It doesn't make you gnostic that you know that there's no god. It just means that you happen to be convinced or you just believe that there's no god. Because if you look at it on the other side. And when you look at, if you're two on the scale, then that means you believe in God, but you don't know that there's God. So the opposite, if, you got, if you're a six, means you believe there's no God, but um, you don't know that for sure. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you're doing this, the thing that I just said I don't do, which is tell people what they think. I mean, you you are uh, like basically think, applying a word to people and then telling them what that uh, what word. that I'm, word I'm has to mean in their minds. Okay, huh? I'm not talking about the word anymore. All right, what are you talking I'm, about? I'm talking about the belief specifically, the belief in God. You have a proposition of whether God exists, and you know if you take the Dawkins scale, which is actually pretty similar to how philosophy actually handles it, um, you can you can have a scale where you believe that the proposition is true and you believe the proposition is false. So, Okay, on I believe it's say, probably false. And? Or you, okay. can, uh, or you can evaluate that position, um, that position not as true or false, but that it's not true, that it hasn't met its burden of proof. Sorry, can you repeat that? I said, can you hear me? Okay. I was saying that uh, you were saying that if you're presented with that proposition, you, uh, right. you can make, say that, you know, oh, you believe that is true, or you believe that it's false, but you can also say that, um, just like, kind of like in a court case type of thing, I know that I've heard that uh, example thrown around on the show before as well, but uh, you're not saying that the claim is false, but you're saying currently that it's not true, that it hasn't met its burden of proof for you to reasonably believe that the claim is, uh, is correct. Yeah, and that's my position. I'm around the four-ish range on that stock and skip, and that's what, even in philosophy, is called Gnosticism. Yeah not being convinced of uh, that's true and not being convinced that's false. Okay, and so I hate to revert to a cliche, but like unicorns. Uh, <laughs> same same position on God is on unicorns. Uh, I don't... Me. What? 
I think I think unicorns funny. probably don't exist because we don't have any good reason to believe that they do. Open to changing my mind. That's my position on the Dawkins scale of unicorns. Yeah. So what I'm saying is my position is different between God and unicorns. Which is, you know, and a lot of thing if you say is that um, like, like what you just said that belief in like these fantastic things and God are, are about the same. Um, I so what me, and this is what I think is like the core difference between people that like call themselves agnostic and people that call themselves atheist is that. Um, for example, me, I'm pretty sure that unicorns don't exist um, because they're literally like made up. Could you uh, be wrong? Just about. Um, depends on how you define unicorn. If you say unicorn like a horse with a horn sticking out of it, then yeah, like, I mean, I'm probably agnostic on that for now. It's probably, it could be some creature out there. Okay. But, um, okay. Could if you... you're talking about Bigfoot, though, Bigfoot is a little bit more specific. People say they observe Bigfoot. Okay. I believe that they should start the business. Uh, God, on the other hand, I don't have that same conviction. Okay. And um, that's kind of what... So... <laughs> that's why the difference makes me from... No okay, can, can we uh, cut yeah. to where you think you're going with this, though? Because uh, I'm, I'm well, feeling yeah, like yeah. this call is maybe running out of, uh, uh, like, educational value. Okay, well, where, where did you think I was going? I'm asking no, you. No. Go. <laughs> oh, I thought you... Well, that, well, that was my point, um, is that there's a lot of, you know, even though you were talking to me about people, like, telling other people what they believe and all that, uh, that's actually happened to me a lot from atheists. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that atheism. happened to you. Yeah, I, and I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there that that is a thing I want to correct that or, you know, bring, okay. bring it up as an issue. All right. Thanks okay. for calling. All right. See ya.